Hi, this is Shadi. Today I want to address the kata, particularly the nage no kata. A lot of people, judo black belts included, will ridicule and just hate practicing it. They only do it maybe a few times in their life just so they can pass the first and second degree black belt. But today I am here to tell you that it has all the fundamentals that you need when it comes to the stand up, the groundwork. Maybe I'll cover it later on with something else, but everything regarding grips, if you're wearing clothes, you know, no gi, and even self defense, you will see that Nage no Kata will cover a wide range of grips and ways to unbalance someone. And not everything, but if it's not fundamental to your grappling, then it's probably not important. and not everyone will need it so the first grip will be is your classical sleeve and lapel sleeve and lapel it's great you can control uh, close to the shoulder and at the same time the arm which when pulled it can create uh, unbalancing and someone can get lifted off their toes uh, alongside with the lapel grip and then from there you can proceed to do many things like here for example let go of one of the grips go to the leg and use it to lift up or you can do forward throws back throws or turn throws it's very versatile and still works today at any level you can imagine of course so sleeve lapel is very special to judo and very unique to it and uh, on the world stage you can see there's just so much beauty created by simply utilizing the very basic sleeve and lapel and uh, sleeve and lapel of course a lot of people would argue you know nobody's gonna wear a thick jacket or in MMA there's no jacket etc etc sure but when it comes to the discipline of judo or the sport of judo and jiu-jitsu this is very much crucial next one is grip around the back coming here from the strike you go in close in the distance and then with the grip around the back what's effective about it first of all you don't need any type of clothing and two when you control the hips you control a great portion of someone's movement and particularly of course their center of gravity and uh here it's showing you that you have to keep it low on the hips so you can control them going over your own hips and you can do so many techniques with this particular uh, grip around the back and not just hip throws you can do leg techniques etc so this is very basic uh, it's probably maybe the first technique you learn as a child maybe and uh rarely a lot of uh, people go for it uh on the international stage obviously because there's far more interesting throws to be done but uh when it's done it's obviously very impressive high amplitude very effective control and of course uh here for example you see the inner reap turned into a hip throw from the back of course here you can also grip the cloth if it is available next is your underhook not all the time you need a jacket and so here you transfer it into an underhook so how he unbalances is of course he pulls the sleeve towards him and the back of the shoulder when you pull it someone's shoulders going forward they will get unbalanced of course and coupled with the sugiyashi here how they are moving because the more you move someone the less strength you need to make them go over and that's one of the beauties of this kata because it teaches you literally every fundamental you need till old age and uh, here you can see you can switch into an underhook for your uh, throw because it can help someone go over rather than the big slack between the lapel and the clavicle that can be incredibly difficult to do and that's why uh, very few are actually able to do it but from the underhook it's actually much easier from personal experience and if you think about it 
when the shoulder is constantly pinched. So overhook and underhook, we will later see the overhook. It's also an option, no jacket needed as well. So here we're starting to see that it's very versatile for something a lot of people would consider a dance or boring or very ritualistic, almost ceremonial. Now here we go back to the realm of judo. A lot of people would like to grip down the back, but really behind the neck is really all you need to get those shoulders hunching forward and thus easier to unbalance someone and get them to to really crisp up because the more they are rigid the easier they are to throw uh, if you listen to the Japanese teachers they will tell you this the more someone is rigid the easier they are to throw so here for example you have Georgian grip and Russian grip which are deep and down the back they're not really fundamental to your judo and they're great but we're talking here about just simply fundamentals when it comes to the back all you need is really the back of the neck so next one is double lapel here we are in a bit in the realm of self-defense so what are some of the most common grips in self-defense or street fight scenarios is gripping both lapels whether it is a buttoned shirt uh, a good t-shirt a polo or a jacket all of it this particular grip is very much the same they did that in the kimono with the kimono in the old days and that's why you see it this way and tamoy nage is the perfect classical throw next is the clinch now the clinch is a we have an overhook and an underhook working simultaneously uh, it's the same stance for both athletes now here the low stance is a little bit reminiscent to old jujitsu before kodokan judo where they stood upright and become more fluid and uh, more free in their expression and far faster and far more uh, and needed far less strength to move someone and uh, simply more beautiful it's called jigotai self-defense stance and here you can see clearly the clinch and so they create a centrifuge both are pulling backwards but then you can shoot someone with this sumi gaishi on the inner thigh not on the crotch please be careful and uh, again without the jacket works perfectly as well you see wrestlers pummeling it and drilling it here you see ishii again with his new wave judo doing the inner reap from this uh, grip and uh, here you can see that this idea of judo you know what do you do without the gi it is true that's a very very plausible critique or very realistic critique but in the past they did them all but with the structuring of judo making it more of a sport and with rules etc the jacket became all the training all the training has done has been done with the jacket strictly next is these attacks off the grips i would say when someone goes in just like we saw with the hip throw not just around the back the grip around the waist but also just body locking someone you can do it for example this way here lift someone up bend the knees and then bend over backward and rotate your shoulders for the uh, back throw or uranage also known as suplex so obviously this isn't the only way to do it you can just do s grip etc another one here is where you just grip the arm and you load them off your shoulder these are great drills for self-defense reflex as Kano said it and this is what Kano wanted he says that a lot of people will go and do more sparring because it looks like it's fun but it's not about just having fun in the moment he said this in mind over muscle he also talked about that if something is beneficial for you you should learn it regardless of how you think of it and that's why he wanted to emphasize a lot of kata training and not just sparring because look at the versatility and uh, how much grips there is now you can say oh what about this grip what about that 
is it crucial for your fundamentals? If not, then you probably don't need it. If you like to do it because you love the style or you think it's aesthetic, fine, like a Georgian grip or whatever. But if it's not essential for your fundamentals, then it probably isn't uh, needed all that much. You can do it regardless based on these fundamentals presented here. If you have anything to add, let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.